Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at how we can handle saving files to file manager in Swift and Swift UI. So for this video we're actually going to be building on top of a previous video that I released where we rebuilt async image with caching options and I'll leave a link to this in the cards at the top and as well in the description box below. So let's actually just briefly run this app to see what happens. So if I just run this and if I go to the performance tab here and we look at the networking tab You'll notice that when we load that app for the first time, it actually does make a request to fetch the images. But as I scroll through, you'll notice that it's actually not calling the network anymore. And instead, what's going on here is that we're actually fetching the image from our local cache that's in memory. Cool. But we've actually got something interesting going on here. So because we're actually storing these images in memory, if I actually just stop the app and run it again, You'll notice that we're actually re-requesting these images every time we launch the app from a fresh launch. And the reason why that is, is because our memory isn't actually saving these images to disk. So it's actually fetching the images and then storing it in memory. So why is that? Well, when you're working with NSCAS, it doesn't actually automatically store the images on the device, like I said before. It only stores it in memory. And if we go into our source file for our cache, you'll see that we actually have set a 50 megabyte limit as well. It will actually only remove items within this cache once we reach the limit. What are we trying to achieve here? So wouldn't it actually be good if we had some logic before we actually try to get our image, if to check to see if it actually exists locally on the device, and if it does, then we serve the image to our user rather than making a network recall on a fresh, you know, launch. Well, this will actually also help speed our app up as too, and we can achieve this by using the file manager. The file manager is essentially what the name implies and it's a place for us to store files locally on our device. So let's actually look into how we can do this. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually build a new file called file storage manager and it's going to, this is our file storage manager and similar to what we have with our image cache, we're using the singleton pattern again, where we create a single instance for us to easily just access and retrieve our images from disk. And within our file storage manager, we actually need two functions, one to handle retrieving a file and one for saving a file as well. So let's just add the shell of these functions for now. Okay. So now that we've added in our two signatures, let's first of all, just tackle our saving functionality. Now, when we're saving this, we're actually going to be using JSON to save to a file. Now, the reason why I'm doing this specifically is because I may want to associate some data with this image that we cache, and we can do this if we save our image as a custom object on the user's device. Now, let's actually create a new struct that we'll use, and it'll be an extension on our file storage manager. We've got our extension and we've got a struct called item, which conforms to codable so that we can convert this to JSON and decoder as well for when we want to save this within our file as JSON. And we've got a name here, which is essentially going to be the key for that item and the data that we want to, you know, associate with this item as well. Now, this data is going to be the image data that we get back from the service that we associate with this item. Now this object will be used for housing a data and I mentioned before that we'll be using the name property to dictate what the file is called and as well as the key for this item. So if you go into our menu view model, you'll notice that we actually have a property here called title and I'm actually just going to use this as the key for our file. So if we just go into our file storage manager, what we actually want to do is because these titles actually have spaces between them, when we actually pass it in a title we want to remove any spaces in between this so let's do that now we, what we want to do is within our save we now want to actually update our function signature to take in this item so we can save it and now we can start the process of actually saving the item to the device so the first thing we're going to do is use the actual framework the file manager so file manager actually has a singleton property called default which allows you to access a default initialization of the file manager so let's create a global constant of it so we can access this from any of our functions and the next thing we need to do is actually access the folder that we want to save our files to now the folder that i'm going to use is the actual caches directory on the user's device and this is where you want to basically put like temporary files that don't really need to be you know they're not really that important and in this case these cache files that we save uh you know i feel like they fall into that category so let's actually just type this out and then we'll break it down so what we're saying here is that we're going to get the cache folder and then 
with our file manager, we're looking for that directory and if it finds it, so using the first property, if we find one that matches, then we're going to continue or else we're just going to return and stop execution. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually create the path for where we want to save our file to because right now we have the folder, but we actually haven't created the file that we want to, you know, save to this path. So let's do that now. So what we're saying here is we're going to create a path within the caches folder using the item name that we stripped the white space and new lines from. And I'm just using this extension that I've created here called dot cache. So we've also as well added a print statement. So this is only going to print it out when you're running your app in a development configuration. So it won't actually do this in production where we just print out the entire path for where we've sailed, saved this file to. And then the final thing we need to do is actually attempt to save this file. So let's do that now. Use a do catch here because it's actually possible for something to go wrong on line 36 and 37. So if something does go wrong in on these two lines, then we're actually going to just print to the console the error. And within our do statement, what we do is we try to encode. So we try to convert our item here into JSON if it's successful, then we'll continue on to the next line where we actually try to write that data to the path that we created above in the file URL. And then we've just got a print statement here, which tells us what that path is so we can actually inspect and see this file. So let's actually just see this in action. So we go into our cached image manager. After we set our object in memory, we actually just want to use that new save function and create the item. Okay, cool. So now that we've wrote the logic to actually save our item, you'll notice though that for the name that I've actually let, I've actually left this as an empty string. Now the reason for this is because like I said before, we actually want to use this title as almost like the key for our item. So if you look at our cache image manager, there's actually no properties in our load function that we can use to access this. So we're going to do a bit of refactoring here. So rather than us having this image URL here, just on its own. We're actually going to change this to be item and then we're going to have a tuple in here called URL and name. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So now we actually should get an error within our function, which is fine. So what we want to do now is we use these new properties from our tuple. So rather than this being image URL that we're going to use for our cache in memory, we're actually going to change this now to actually use the name of the item as its key. So let's do that now. And then we're also going to update this to be item.name because that's the name of the item in the cache. And then within our fetch, we don't want to use the name because this isn't, you know, the URL. We actually want to use the URL within this fetch function. So let's do that. And then same again for our cache when we set it in memory, we want to use the name this time and not the URL as a key. And then within our new file storage manager function, we also want to update this string to use item.name. And then in our print, so we also want to use the URL as well to say this is the URL that we're going to be caching. So now if you actually look at your project, you should have another error. And that's because if you go into here, you'll notice that it's expecting a URL. But again, inside of our initializer, we only pass in the URL, we don't actually pass in the name. So we want to copy what we did before. And this time we want to have item here. And then we want to use this as a tuple as well. So we're going to say name. And then we're going to say URL is also string. We're going to need to update this. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And we should have an error within our Swift UI preview, which is fine. So let's just update first this first before we fix this function. Okay, cool. So now we've updated our cached image to use that tuple where we pass in a name and a URL. And then for our task, rather than us passing in this, we just want to pass in our item now. So we'll just say load item and this should fix that. Okay, awesome. So we've got two more errors. And this is because we need to update where we actually use this within our VStack. So 
Now, Rowan is having the URL. We're now going to pass in the food items title and its image URL in here. So let's do that now. So we're going to say item. And then within here, we're going to say the name is going to be the item dot title. And then the URL will be the item dot image URL like so. Cool. And now all our errors have gone away. So you can see here by using tuples, it's just a nice way of you not having to create a struct. You can just like pass in stuff for like temporary objects that don't really need a new file. And um, so that's why I like to use tuples in these situations. So if we go back into our cache image manager, everything's looking all good. So now what we want to do is we actually want to run this on the simulator. So let's run this now. And if you actually look at our console logs here, you'll see that it's actually saving these files to the cache. Now, one thing to note here is that when it's actually saving the file name, it's actually still got the spaces, which to be honest with you, I think is actually fine. So I know that extra logic I added in to remove and trim it was to remove the spaces, but I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue. So I think what we can do is actually remove this initializer since we don't really need it anymore. So I'm just gonna remove this temporarily to see if this is gonna be fine. I think it will be. So let's actually just see where we can actually notice this file because if you look at the app, then you know nothing's actually gonna be different because we've not done anything different other than saving a file to the disk. So in order to actually see this file, what you're going to do is actually copy the path here from your console.log. So after your name in the users directory, and then you want to make sure that you're at the root of your system in the terminal. Now I use an application called iTerm. You can use the terminal that comes in with the Mac if you want to, that's fine. So in here, we're just going to type open and then um, I can never remember what this squiggly line is called. So if you know what this is called, please put it in the comment section below. <laughs> so then we want to hit open to open up this folder. And what you should see is that in your finder window, within your simulator, within the caches folder, you should see some files here being saved. And these are the files that we use for the title. So we got the burrito meal, hot dog and the taco meal here as well. So these are the images that have been fixed and saved to the device, as you can see here. And if I just scroll through, you'll notice here that the beef burger meal wasn't saved. And the reason why that was, was because if you check, you'll see that the image actually failed to load for this item. But if I actually scroll through and actually go to the other beef burger meal, you now notice that the beef burger meal has also been saved to disk. No, so this is intentional because I purp I purposely messed up the URL for this so you can see it failing. Okay, cool. So now that we've actually saved the image to disk, the next thing that we need to do is actually retrieve the image as well now because if you just look at our cache image manager in here, after everything is okay, after retrieving our image, we save it. What we actually want to do is we actually want to retrieve that image before we actually start the logic to fetch a image from the server. So if it already exists on this, then we'll just serve up that image rather than starting this whole process here. So first of all, we're going to do to do a bit of refactoring within our actual file storage manager. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to go into here and then we're just going to close all the other tabs just to make this a bit neater. And then within here, what we want to do is that we need to actually access the cache folder again within our retrieve function. Now, I don't want to have to like copy this and paste it in here again. So instead, what we're going to do is just create a computer property. So within the scope of this class, we can always access this cache folder. So let's do that now. And then rather than doing this logic here like so, we're just going to replace this with our cache folder URL. So now we can just access this from within the scope of this class. And we want to do this within our retrieve function first to get the cache folder like so. Okay, sweet. And then within our cache folder, we actually want to look for an item with these file names. So within our retrieve function, we actually need to update the signature of this function now to actually pass in a name. So let's do that. Cool. So we're going to update this function signature to say retrieve with file name. So it's going to attempt to retrieve the file with the name that it can find on the disk. So in order to retrieve a file from the disk, it's a bit different from this. So we're actually going to type this one out line by line together. So the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to get the path for where this file lives. So essentially we want to do this. So now we're going to try to find the file URL where the file name dot cache exists. So this is going to create that path for us. And the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to try to get the data from the file that exists at this path. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to get the file at this URL and it's going to give us a URL and it's going to try to read the contents of that file and convert it to data. So if this is fine, then we can continue. But if it fails, then it's actually going to return. So now that we have the content of that file, so the content of one of these files, the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to convert that into JSON because remember we marked our model as codable. So on the next line after here, we're going to try to use the JSON decoder to turn this into our item. So let's do that now. So the next thing we do is we try to decode the data that we got from the file to our model. So try to turn it into this model. And if it's successful, then we'll continue. So now if this is successful, the next thing that we actually want to do is return this item. So within our retrieve function, we actually need to update our function signature to return the item that we successfully retrieved and decoded. So we've actually made this optional because it's possible for this to mess up. So wherever we have a return now, we actually want to return nil to let us know that it actually failed to retrieve the item. And after all of this, we simply just want to return the item that we've successfully decoded. And just to make this a bit more better so we can actually know what's going on, I'm just going to add in some print statements so it's a bit clearer. Okay, cool. So now we have this in place. Let's actually look at using this within our cached image manager. Awesome. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to stop and just, you know, write down the steps that we're trying to achieve here so that it's a lot clearer. So I'm just going to write some comments and then we'll break down the different scenarios. Okay, cool. So now we have our scenarios. So let's go through each one. So our first scenario is going to check to see if the image is in memory. If it is, then we just simply want to return the image. So we don't even want to check if the image is on disk or call the network. We just want to, you know, return it. Now, if it's not in memory, then we want to check if it's on disk and this falls into our second scenario. So we want to check to see if the image is on disk and if it is on disk, so if it's saved, then we want to return the image and then store it in memory for later so that you don't need to keep checking on disk and decoding it and all that kind of stuff. It just speeds up the application. Now, if it's not on disk, then we want to actually start the process to actually download the image and handle storing it. So we're going to try to fetch the image. We're going to store it on disk and then we're going to store it in memory for later. So what we want to do is we actually want to refactor our load function to follow the scenarios that we have here, starting from scenario one. So let's actually do this now. So the first scenario that we want to do is handling our image in memory. So we don't actually want to set the current state to be loading at all if it happens to be there. So let's actually move this logic that we have here for checking our NS cache to be the first thing that we do. Okay, cool. So what we're going to say now is we're going to check to see if it's in our cache with the key name that we've assigned it. And if it is, then we're going to set the current state to be success and just return that image and stop execution. So we won't actually carry on. So if this function returns nil, then we need to handle the next step, which is check to see if the image is on this. So now we actually want to use our retrieve function. So underneath here, let's actually just type this one out together. So we're going to say if let, so in here, we're saying that if we can successfully retrieve an item with the name from our cache storage, what we want to do within here is first of all, set that within our cache. So let's do that now. And then for the key, we then want to use the item name as its key within our cache. Okay, cool. And then after we finish storing that in memory, the next thing we want to do is actually return that image. So we want to set the current state to be success. And then we want the data that we pass through to be our disk cache item dot data. Cool. And then we want to stop execution from here because we don't want to continue on to actually fetch in the image. So this will stop execution. Now, just to make this a bit better, I'm going to add in a print statement so that we get some feedback that we've hit this scenario. So let's do that now. So now what we want to do is we want to carry on with our scenario three. So this is now going to actually try to fetch the image and store it in disk and in memory for later. So if you actually look at our code from before, it actually does already do this because we set the current state to be loading. We try to fetch the image. 
we once we get a successful image but we set the current state to be success we save it in memory and then we also try to save it on disk as well and then we'll print out that we've cached the image and if anything goes wrong then we'll just throw an error saying something has gone wrong so we kind of are already doing scenario three so let's actually just see this in action now so if we just run this now so i'm actually going to delete the app and start it fresh like a you know cold install so let's delete this and if we just run this on the simulator and i'm just going to scroll through so i get all the images so you can see in our logs if we actually just look at our logs here it actually failed to get the file beef burger meal from this because we ran this fresh it doesn't actually exist so what it's going to do is actually create the path for the file and then save that onto the file as well and then what we do is after we save it we then cache it and then as you can see as we start to scroll through it's actually fetching the image from the cache as you can see here, so we're not actually re-requesting the data, so we're actually hitting this scenario here, scenario one, where it just gets our image from the cache, so we don't actually even check the disk. And we just look at our simulator folder. So you'll notice in our simulator in the folder, the files have been successfully saved as well. So this is looking good. So now let's actually just stop running our app and see if it fetches our image from our disk, rather than trying to re-request the images again. So just so you can see this as well, I'm going to open up this networking tab to see if it actually does anything. So let's just run this. Cool. And as you can see, when our application launches for the first time, we now get in our logs that it successfully got the file from disk. So on our network tab, we actually didn't make any network requests at all. So you can see here that we're now fetching the image from the cache as well. So we're not actually making any unnecessary calls and we're speeding up the speed we're speeding up our application so this is great and works well and if you're actually building an app here where the images can never really update and change then this solution is perfect and works fine for you but what about if you're in a situation where someone actually could update this image so this beef burger image and it could actually change over time well technically we've got an issue here with this solution because as you can see with our items, we don't actually have something called an expiration date. So because we save our images to the cache, we don't actually ever clear it after a certain amount of time. So you could basically see this beef burger meal image forever. It will never update. So what we want to do is we actually want to give each one of our items some kind of expiry date so that after a certain amount of time, the app deletes the image and retries for a new one. Well, if you actually look at our model in our file storage manager, if I just go in here, You'll notice, just make this bigger, you'll notice that we actually marked our item as codable, meaning that we can actually associate data with the object that we save within our cache file. So what we're going to do now is actually add a new property called eviction date, which is what we will use to actually clear an item from disk. So after the data, we're going to create a new constant called eviction date. And then what will happen after you add in this new struct is you'll actually get an error. And the reason being is because with this doesn't have a default value. So what we need to do is actually update our cache image manager and give it some kind of eviction date. Now in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this file a 24 hour cache limit. So what I mean by that is that starting from now, this file will actually not be valid tomorrow basically at this time so let's actually just type this out and i'll break it down okay cool so what we're doing here is we're just using the calendar components to get the date tomorrow from now and then we're going to use that as the eviction date as you can see here and i'm just safely on um, i'm just using optional chaining to just safely make sure that we can get this date rather than force unwrapping it now because i've done it this way what's going to happen is always going to set the date to be tomorrow if you don't want it to be tomorrow like if you want it to be like five minutes or you know a week or whatever then you can just modify the current date here for example so i could actually just change this to minutes months hours years whatever but we're just going to do this for 24 hours which is all good so now what we need to do is we need to refactor our scenario too because this time in our scenario two, we actually want to add in another step here. So we want to check to see if the disk is, if the image is on disk and within the expiration time date. 
So if it's within the expiration date range, then we want to return the image. So go inside of this case here. But if it isn't, then we actually want to continue. And we also want to write a new function to remove an image. But let's do the first bit. So after your if let here, we want to write a another check here to make sure to see if the date dot now is less than the disk cache items eviction date. So if the date now is less than the eviction date, then we're going to continue and we're going to return that image. But if it isn't, what we want to do is a continue execution here. And before we actually start execution, we want to try to remove that file. So within our file storage manager, we're actually going to need to add a new function to remove the file on a user's device. So let's go inside of here. And then we're going to type a new function here called remove with file name cool so within this remove function we simply just want to pass in the file name that we want to remove so now what we want to do within our function is we actually want to access the path to that file where it's currently on disk and we want to actually check to see if it exists before we attempt to remove it now why are we checking if it exists well there's actually no point in trying to remove something that isn't technically there so why have in the extra logic to remove a file when we could check to see if it exists first so let's actually type this one out together Okay, cool. So the first thing that we're doing here is we're actually getting the path to that file similar to what we've done on this line here. Now within this, the scope of this optional chainmen, what we want to do, like I said before, is check to see if the file exists at that path. So after here, we want to see if the file actually exists. Okay, cool. So now what we're saying here is that if we can unwrap this and also if the file exists at the cache files.path, then we now want to attempt to remove that file. So let's do that now. Cool. So we use the do catch because it's potentially possible that the remove item fails. So we're going to catch any errors if it does, but we try to remove the item at the file URL that we've created. So now let's actually use our function before we try loading and retrieving an image. So if we go back into our cache image manager, what we want to do is that before we actually even attempt to load it, we want to first of all delete the file since we've reached this path here. So we want to call file manager storage manager dot shared dot remove. Cool, like so. So let's just go over this one last time. So we're going to attempt to see if the image is in memory. And if it is, then we're going to return that and stop execution. Now, if it isn't, we're going to attempt to see if the image is saved on disk. Then we're now going to check to see if the eviction date for that image is less than the time now. So we're going to make sure that we're not ahead of when we should remove this file. And if we're not, then we're going to retrieve that image and we're going to set it in cache first and then we're going to return it then what we do is that if we're not so if we've expired so if we're ahead of the eviction date then we're going to try to remove the image off the device so we can start fresh we're going to start to load the image retrieve it set it in memory save the new image and then we're just going to print that we've cached the image and anything goes wrong then we'll also set an error to say that something has gone wrong okay cool so now let's actually just test this out so we actually just run this fresh now again because we need to save the new files with the eviction dates. So let's just run this fresh. Okay, cool. So now we'll cache the image. And now in our simulator, we should have those images saved at this path. So if we just go back into our library caches. So as you can see, our images have now been saved into our simulator. So how can we actually simulate our images expiring because we set an expiration date of tomorrow? Well, a quick and easy way to do this is to actually just change the time on your Mac. So I'm just going to change this very quickly to be two days in the future. So. So I'm just going to change the date here. I'm rather than setting this to automatically, I'm just going to set this to be next week, Tuesday. Okay, cool. So now if we actually rerun this, 
So what I actually want to do now is I actually want to rerun this and show you what happens when we actually run this two days in the future from now. So if I just hit run, and if you just notice, just keep an eye on the files to see what happens. So you'll see there that it actually deletes that image. And also as well, you'll notice that it's actually saved the new images now at this new time. And if you actually look at the console logs here, you'll see that it's actually creating a new file because we've exceeded the eviction date. So we've gone past when the file is valid on the device. Cool. So just so I don't forget to do this, I'm actually going to set my time back. <laughs> So yeah, I'll set the time back. So now we can see that this is working. So as you can see now, we actually have a solution where if we also keep on scrolling, you'll see that it's still fetching the image from cache. So everything is working great. So we have an async image now that actually handles storing images, data in cache, in memory, and also saving these images to the disk as well, as well as having our own custom eviction date so we can handle when we want the file to be alive for on the user device. So this is great. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left some feedback in the comment section below, as well as liking this video and subscribe to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you in a bit. Deuces.